It's, uh, it's a great privilege uh, for me to be here with you all today to celebrate the accomplishments of such a diverse group of professional engineers in the, in the federal uh, service. Uh, I also want to thank uh, the National Society of Professional Engineers, uh, who so ably uh, carries out its role as the voice and advocate of licensed professional engineers. And, and through your leadership, uh, you know, not only act as our standard bearer uh, for all practicing professional engineers, but you also reinforce the critical contribution that engineers bring to the public good. And uh, I think that uh, your establishment, along with President uh, Truman's support in uh, 1951 of uh, Engineer Week, is, is uh, a good example of, of that support. Uh, the society links us all together. And uh, it focuses us on the most important aspects of our calling, uh, whether, whether through NSPE's outreach uh, to our young, reinforcing the importance of science and math in their education, uh, your leadership and support of continuous education for practicing professionals, uh, or your vigilance regarding the importance of licensure for those who engage in public engineering work. Uh, the society does a world of good. And for that, I thank you very much. Um, the nominees uh, this year for the Federal Engineer of the Year uh, represent the best of, of our engineering profession and service. Uh, there are over 100,000 uh, engineers in the Federal Service, according to the Department of Labor. I found that on the Internet, so I'm, I'm sure it's true. Uh, we, we're going to recognize uh, 24 here today and the 10 finalists for Federal Engineer of the Year. And, and they are all, uh, without exception, uh, exceptional individuals. Uh, they are, by every measure, public servants. Uh, they typically perform their work behind the scenes and to little fanfare. And that's one of our goals today, to help address uh, some of that. Uh, they embody our code of conduct and represent the highest standards of professionalism and technical excellence. They translate the needs and ideas of those we serve into tangible projects uh, and they advance our ability to operate and to support those who we serve. Uh, but most of all, uh, like all engineers, I truly believe they are problem solvers. It's somehow coded in their DNA. And uh, more than any other characteristic, I believe that's what sets engineers and the engineering profession apart, all about solving problems. I'm, I'm familiar with the work uh, of a couple of the nominees today uh, because I've had the opportunity to serve with them. Uh, but I think that they represent all the nominees uh, in, in, uh, in their scope of work. Uh, uh, Commander Michelle View, who I've had the opportunity to know for many years, is a, is a uh, public works officer on a large air station. And like her counterparts in the, in the Coast Guard, in the Army, in the Air Force, uh, and the other services, the Marine Corps, uh, operates and maintains a, a huge platform that, that the military operates off of. Uh, Vince Sobas is... Uh, uh, represents, I think, very well the civilian employees uh, who serve. Uh, Vince went out to Haiti and was uh, key in, in the aftermath of the devastation there and helped uh, to uh, determine if facilities were structurally sound. He helped to prevent uh, folks who were in the floodplain from being further harmed. And both of, the, both, uh, of those individuals, all ten of the finalists, uh, are professional engineers. And I think that, uh, I think that speaks very highly. I've been thinking for a while about uh, what I would say uh, to a group uh, of engineers and, and, and try to, how to talk about the value that professional engineers bring uh, to our country. And I know that I've got a, a very sympathetic audience here today and, and one that uh, won't take a lot of convincing unless you came here to see Mike Huckabee, in which case you need to go uh, down the hall here. Um, but a couple of weeks ago, I had the opportunity uh, to join my fellow service engineer chiefs, General Van uh, in the back here and, and General Byers, uh, and, and go on a trip to visit our forces in Afghanistan. And, and I got to see firsthand again uh, the incredible value that engineers of every discipline bring uh, to the individual service members uh, that they're supporting, to our national security, and to our common good. Uh, each of the military commanders that we went and visited echoed a common theme. They said, we need more engineers. Uh, they were asking for more engineering forces, 
uh, to be able to enable our war fighters to extend their reach and to push out into deeper parts of the country and to bring security to the Afghan people. I saw young men and women uh, who were risking their safety uh, to bring peace and stability to a population that has known very little of either. Uh, while these warriors went about their task, uh, many, no doubt, uh, took for granted the amount of engineering uh, that went into their efforts. Uh, everywhere I turned, I saw the power of imaginative engineering minds. I saw Army combat engineers, Air Force Red Horse units, Navy CVs busy at work, cloaked in high-tech armor to protect them that some creative engineer conceived of and was able to bring to fruition. I saw an electronic warning system that alerted all to take cover if, if a rocket would be uh, launched into their uh, camp. I traveled between military enclaves in, uh, in what's called a mine-resistant ambush-protected vehicle, or an MRAP. We've got an acronym for everything in the military, an MRAP, which has been engineered to withstand these improvised explosive devices and have saved many, 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 many of our servicemen and women's lives. And I flew in a, an engineering marvel as a, uh, as a naval officer, I have to say this, uh, the C-17 Globemaster military transport, uh, which is designed to carry 170,000 pounds through thin air. And I actually sat on that between two of these big MRAPs that weighed 35,000 pounds each. And I, I, I do have to admit, I was thinking, I hope the guy that designed the chains that are holding these things down got his PE in mechanical engineering because uh, uh, they were bouncing around a lot. But I got to witness the built environment, uh, sometimes rudimentary, uh, that was engineered to provide healthy shelter and sanitation for our troops in, in very austere uh, surroundings. I got to meet with professional engineers from the uh, U.S. Agency for International Development, from the Corps of Engineers, from other federal agencies, uh, civilians that were out there uh, doing a very difficult job balancing fiscal, diplomatic, and engineering challenges uh, to create a systemic approach to to approach uh, to uh, uh, affect change and all the difficult challenges that Afghanistan has. Uh, I wouldn't, but, but I could speak for, for many, many, many minutes about all the, all the fascinating things and critical things that engineers, both military and civilian, uh, are having on every aspect of that multinational effort. But, but even more impactful to me, as I got the chance to travel around, I got to see what, what a countryside is like without practicing professional engineers, a place where decades of war and conflict uh, had deprived people of such basic things that we take them for granted, uh, safe, passable roads, electricity, even if for a couple hours a day, uh, basic sewage systems, uh, even something as fundamental as potable water that won't make you or your family sick. And so uh, it, was, uh, it, it, was, it was good to get out and to see uh, all the things that professional engineers bring to our society, all the things that, that professional engineers do for people every day, uh, the things that allow us to have basic security, basic commerce, and basic education, which is so fundamental to our country and to the freedom and, and the way of life that we enjoy, and all the things that are built upon those simple things that, that professional engineers can bring. Uh, so the good news is that thanks to the efforts of our war fighters and a great team of military and civilian professional engineers, uh, all that is changing. Roads are being built, wells are being drilled, power distribution is being improved, and that's what federal engineers do, wherever they're asked to serve and whatever challenge they're faced with. So the great news is uh, it was a great trip, and it was a powerful reminder to me of how important and how fundamental professional engineers' contributions are. Back home here, uh, we face many challenges. Uh, we continue to be a nation at war. We're facing uh, some fiscal challenges, and we're coming out of a out of recession. But all of us in federal service will be asked to find ways to tighten our belts, to find ways to do more with less. And that's exactly why we're here. That's exactly what professional engineers do. That's exactly what those of us in the federal service need to do. So the country needs our best ideas. We need tough decisions to be made, and most of all, we need logical, clear-minded, practical thinking, can-do professionals. Our country needs more professional engineers. So I'd like, to, uh, I'd like to congratulate the nominees from each agency. I'd like to congratulate the finalists 
uh, and I look forward to uh, congratulating the Engineer of the Year. Engineers working in the federal government exemplify the best of our public service. You have a high calling. Your efforts have broad impact on those you serve. You are truly public servants. Your ingenuity and innovation and hard work benefited it all. It's an honor and a privilege to help be able to recognize you and thank you on behalf of the public you so capably serve. I also want to thank all here today who have chosen careers in engineering. We are all made better by your choice. Thank you very much.